Happy Easter, New Hope. He is risen. Would you stand to your feet as we worship the Lord? Christ the Lord has risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. church this morning and for those joining online we want to say welcome you but would you turn to your neighbor and say howdy neighbor how are you doing happy easter (laughs) y'all greet someone hug a neck shake a hand if you're joining online we just want to say welcome comment where you're watching from and we just want you to know that jesus loves you he's died for you and he is risen together as we worship the God who was.
reason to lift our voice to praise him to praise the one who has saved our soul that's paid the debt that we could never pay and so just right now just under your own breath just out loud just begin to whisper God thank you thank you Jesus come on every voice thank you Jesus thank you for loving me thank you for the cross thank you for saving me thank you that you are alive that, that you are not a dead God but you are alive Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I cast, I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree, his body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance. Coming back full of glory 
stories full of grace. One day we will see his face and he too shall take us and raise us from death into life. Let's sing this again. He shall return. that you are alive today, meaning that you are still moving today, meaning that you are healing today. I pray for those in the room today who came in with a sickness, those in the room who came with aches and pains, I pray right now that you would heal. I pray right now that you begin to do miracles for those in the room today who came in just emotionally broken, those in the room today who came in with anxiety, depression, we thank you that you are the healer, we thank you that you are alive, we thank you that you defeated death, hell, and the grave, and that you are moving here right now. And we pray that you'd begin to touch people in the places that, that they need healed today. For those who are watching online today because they can't be here, well, I pray that you would just enter into where they are at right now and you would meet with them. We believe that you are the God who can do everything and today we come before you. Today we remember the price that you paid for us. Today we remember that sacrifice and today we celebrate that that cross did not cause the end for you but you rose from the grave. We celebrate. We thank you, God, that you are so good, that you are so faithful. Jesus, today we decide that what you did on that cross is enough for us. That if there was never, if you never did anything ever again, that what you did on that cross is enough. But we thank you, Jesus, that you have more for us. We thank you that you want to continue to meet with us. We thank you that as we look back in our life, that we can see time and time again that you have been good, that you have been there, that you have been faithful, and today we worship you. Come on, church, just begin to worship him in your own voice. Begin to thank him that he is so good, that he brought us from death to life, that his blood covered our sins, that we don't have to pay the price that we deserve to pay, that he already paid it. Just begin to praise him for his goodness. God, you are so faithful. We worship you, God. We thank you that you are so good. That's not about our goodness, it's about how good you are. You are good, you are That we can never good enough, yet you still paid the price for us. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, lift your voice, let's sing this together. Oh my life, is all my life you have been
God, you are so good. You are so faithful. We say thank you today. We celebrate today that you are alive. We celebrate today that you are speaking, that you are moving, that you are here. We celebrate today that, we, that you have more for us. We say that you are so good. God, I thank you that in spite of me that you still move. Thank you that you've chased us down. Thank you that there's people in this room today that you've been chasing down. That in the darkness you were there, that you still love them, that you still want more for them. We thank you, God, that you are so good. We worship you today. And here and we pray. Amen. Amen. You thankful that we serve a good God this morning? Oh, that seems like you're at a golf tournament and you just saw someone have a good shot. You're like, yes, God is so good. I am so thankful. No, I know some of you guys, when Kayla Clark broke that record three, you were going crazy. I want to I wanna know right now, how many of you know that we serve a good God this morning? Come on, he is so good. He is so faithful. He is alive today, amen? You look at every other religion, they're worshiping a dead God, but today we celebrate because our God is alive. He is alive. Come on. And this church, I'll tell you what, it's not a dead church. Turn your neighbor and say, we ain't dead. This is a live church, and we are so glad you've joined us. This isn't just a building to attend. This is a family to be a part of. I know you were greeting people earlier, but turn and say hello to someone around you. This is a family. We want you to greet people around you. If you don't know them, introduce yourself. If you're joining us online today, welcome to New Hope. We're so glad that you've tuned in and joining us wherever you're watching today. Happy Easter from New Hope. It is a good day to be here. It is Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday, New Hope family. We're so glad that you are here today to celebrate a risen Savior. Hey, if you're new today, we want to say welcome to New Hope. If you got a bulletin when you walked in, there should be a connect form on the bottom of that. Or you can go to newhope.church slash info. At New Hope, we want to get connected uh, with you. We, Like I said, we are not just a church. This isn't just a building to attend. This is a family to be a part. Of and we want to get you plugged in. We want to get you connected. And I promise you that if you fill out the connect form, I promise you that if you go on to newhope.church slash info and you fill it out, I promise we will not be that weird uncle that sends weird memes all the time. Okay, we will not be uh, whatever company is calling you about your extended car warranty. That's not us. Turn your neighbor and say, that's not us. We won't spam you. We won't blow up your phone with whatever weird text messages you get around the, the election season. We, we're, we're not like that, but we want to just get to know you a little bit better. This is a family. We want to get you plugged in because we believe this is a good family to be a part of. Maybe some of you are like, I have a family, and one family is enough for me. I'll tell you what. I, I don't know what I'm going to do for lunch, but I'm telling you right now. Turn and say, listen up. This is a good family to be a part of, and we are so glad that you've joined us. If you'd like to give today, there's a few ways you can do so. You can give online, you can mail in your giving, or there's some drop boxes in the back wall. If you're new today, we did not invite you here for your money. We did not invite you here to ask you to give. But if you would like to give any loose dollars, any loose money that is given, that is not designated into the boxes, will go to benevolence. It'll go to help people who are in need in our church and in our community. And we just want to say thank you for being a giving church. Thank you for being faithful in your tithe and for giving above and beyond. If you're new to New Hope, New Hope is all about what's going on in our community and what's going on all around the world. And last year, I believe we gave 1.5, is that right? $1.4 million to missions that we said, that you guys gave and we sent out there. So if you're looking for a church today and you want to be a part of a church that is sending a part of a church that's doing something globally, New Hope is a great family to be a part of. Hey, if you were at the Easter musical last weekend, there was a Saturday night and a Sunday night showing. I think there was over 2,000 people who showed up for those two nights here. It was a packed house if you were here. Maybe you walked in and you had to walk out because there weren't seats. But today, uh, our choir and orchestra, they have prepared a, a special for you from the musical. So turn your attention to them as they share this morning.
Easter, New Hope it's family. Easter, Woo! come on. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Woo! What a great weekend. That's right. It is. You wrote a song for it. Happy Easter, happy Easter, happy Easter. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's all I have so far. Well, that was so but good. I'm working on it. Mm. We'll cut this part out, but we won't tell them that you just wrote that. I right <laughs> New Hope, we believe that relationships are so important and our pastors would love to connect to you. Always. If you're joining us for the first time today, fill out the short connect form attached to your bulletin or go to newhope.church slash info for the digital connect card. We also want to treat you you, you with the free coffee on us. Find one of our pastors to get a free coffee or a smoothie at our coffee shop at the north end of the lobby. Awesome. Our annual missions convention is coming up April 6th, Woo! 14th. Highlight of my year. I love missions week. Come on. This year's missions week will be highlighting Asia Pacific and there are many events, many throughout this many. missions week you can be a part of. There's no excuse to not find something you can do on missions week. So check them out at newhope.church slash info. Celebrating missions. One of those things is the missions banquet. The mission banquet tickets are available for purchase in the lobby, $20 per person. Also coming up here at New Hope is the baby dedication on Sunday, April 21st. You can sign up for that at newhope.church slash info. For more information on any of these announcements right. and more, go to newhope.church slash info or refer to your bulletin for a list of upcoming events. We're so glad you've joined us today at New Hope. He has risen. He is risen indeed. In indeed. Hey! <laughs> they're, they're over. I am so glad that you're here today. Welcome. We are honored that you are here to celebrate Resurrection Day with us. I'm a little odd, so you just got to put up with me today. All right? Okay. One laugh. <laughs> Building a report. My name is Jeff. I'm one of the pastors here, and I am glad to be here and to uh, share with you this morning this resurrection day where Jesus is risen, and that is what we celebrate. We have reason to celebrate him today. What an incredible way to celebrate with the choir singing about his love. What love is, it is Jesus who gave his life for you and for me. The Bible says that there's no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friend. It tells us that God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. I'm so thankful for his love. It changes everything. Today is the greatest day in history as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It gives us purpose and reason for why we're here as believers, as Christians. It is the day that gives us a reason to be. It is Jesus is risen from the dead. So I'm so thankful that you are here today. I want to just give you a couple of thoughts. One, the missions banquet that they talked about. You cannot buy those tickets today, but if you haven't gotten your tickets, please plan to do so. You can email our, our office. You can talk to someone today. We can get your name on a list. We, just because of the, of the day being a holiday, we, didn't, uh, we chose not to sell tickets in the lobby, but that is coming up quick. So make your plans for that. That is a very special time. And uh, you'll also see in your bulletin there is a singles ministry that's, that's uh, a lot of singles ministries. And we just want to make you aware of that. We had a handout last week. If you are single looking for a place to connect, there's a variety of different ways for you to do that. And we want to, uh, to help you find that place. You've chosen to uh, worship with us on a very special day. And we've got some very special people in the room today. Uh, just because of the way our services are, we chose to have kids in the service with us today. So there's no kids' church. We've got all of our elementary and some of our uh, preschoolers with us today. So if you are elementary age or you're a preschool age and you are here in the service, I want to ask you to stand and we are together just going to celebrate all of our kids. Awesome. Look around. Look at all these. Look at all these amazing. Oh, we've got some back in the back just going. Yes. If you're joining online, we're glad you're here today. Kids, I hope that you got your, 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 your bag with all the goodies in it. There is a special surprise bag in there. It's black. If you didn't read the tag on it, that's saving to the very end of the service today. We've got a very special, dramatic end to our service, and you are going to be part of that, kids. And so Pastor Courtney is going to come help us with that time, and uh, we're, just, we're just excited because Jesus is alive. I want to begin what I'm sharing with you today by reading from a passage of Scripture, 
And uh, this is about the very first Easter Sunday. And so I want to ask that you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. We have a way of celebrating Scripture. We love Scripture. We love God's Word. And uh, we, if you've got your device, you turn to Luke 24. Otherwise, we, it will be up on the screen for you to read along and follow along this morning. This is the uh, very first Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day. I'm going to read the first 12 verses of Luke 24, and then we're going to skip over to verse 44. So it says, starting in verse 1, But very early on Sunday morning, the women, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, and so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. And then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell the eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up, ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Skipping over to verse 44, we know that Jesus wasn't there. It wasn't that they stole his body. He had risen, and now he had appeared to many people, and he's with his disciples in verse 44. Jesus said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. What did the angel say? He is risen. He is risen from the dead. He's not here. He is risen from the dead, just like he said. That is what we are here today to do, to celebrate, and we have reason to celebrate. And so through the message this morning, I want you to be asking yourself this question. What reason do I have to celebrate? For those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus, this day is a day of huge significance because Jesus rose. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. Why do I have reason to celebrate in a world that is so down and out, that is filled with so many, so much turmoil and trouble? A lot of people are asking, where is hope? Where can I find hope? Jesus said that this message This message from the Old Testament prophets that said that Messiah would suffer and die and rise again from the dead, overcoming death in the grave, that this message will be proclaimed to all nations, and that message is that there is forgiveness of sins to all who repent. I'm so thankful for that. And today at the end of this message, I'm going to give you opportunity to do that, to to repent of your sins, to turn away from your sins, and to turn toward Jesus and put him first in your life. We all love good comeback stories, and this is one of the greatest comeback stories ever. As uh, we're in this March Madness season in the college basketball world, I was really hoping that there would be a, a great story to tell of a team that came from behind and came and, and won in, in huge fashion. Uh, and I haven't found that story, but yesterday, yesterday there was a game on TV and it involved uh, the University of Illinois and the University of Connecticut. Anybody see that game? Illinois is the team that on Thursday beat Iowa State to knock them out of the tournament. So I was a little bit interested in how that game went. Well, I didn't watch the game, but here's what happened. Toward the end of the first half, they were tied 23 to 23. Connecticut went on to score five unanswered points, and they ended the half 28-23. Connecticut went on to score 30 points without a point from Illinois, and they were leading 53-23. to Incredible, 30 points straight. 
That's not a comeback story. That's a take off and get out of here story. Let's just get this game over and let's go home. That's how you do that. I've got some incredible comeback stories. There's a lot as I was thinking about all the different stories that could illustrate this whole idea of a, of a great comeback. And uh, I came up with a few. I'm limited in time, but I uh, just want to share a few with you. This one here, you might be able to tell me who this is. Kids? Abraham Lincoln. We've got a, we've got a picture of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, whether you knew it or not, only had three years of formal education. Abraham Lincoln uh, had two failed business adventures. Abraham Lincoln uh, served a term in the U.S. Congress in the 1840s, but went on to uh, experience eight failed campaigns until in 1860, he came from behind, did the unthinkable, and won the presidency in 1860, become the 16th president of the United States. And some say he's the greatest president in the history of the United States. Abraham Lincoln is an incredible comeback story. This is a boogie board. Uh, I don't have room for a surfboard, but another inspirational comeback story is that of Bethany Hamilton. How many of you have heard of Bethany Hamilton? You might have watched the movie Soul Surfer. It came out many years ago. Uh, Bethany Hamilton uh, had aspirations to be a professional surfer. And at the age of nine, at the age of nine, uh, had her first sponsorship, her first endorsement. At the age of 13, 2003, Bethany Hamilton, while surfing, encountered a 14-foot tiger shark that resulted in her losing her entire left arm. What's incredible about her story is that less than a month after the attack, after surgery, after everything, she was back in the water surfing, 26 days after that attack. Three months after the attack, she was back in surfing competition, and within two years, she had won a national title in surfing. That is an incredible and inspirational comeback story. Here's one of my favorites. You might know who these guys are. This is my era. This is my team. Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. In 1993, the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, their star, uh, won their third title in a row to become an elite company in the NBA, one of only three teams that's ever won three championships in a row. That summer of 1993, Michael Jordan's father was brutally murdered. And if you'll remember, in October of 1993, Michael Jordan shocked the world when at age 30, he decided that he was going to retire from basketball, stating that he just didn't have the passion to play the game anymore. So October 6, 1993, Michael Jordan retired. Did a couple of years uh, minor league baseball, but he finally came to his senses and came back to, to basketball rejoined the Bulls, and that's why he's wearing number 45. That's the comeback number. He couldn't even wear 23 because they had retired his number. He is that great. After that season, the next season, and the following three, Michael Jordan won two MVP uh, awards, three MVPs for the NBA Finals, and won their third NBA title in a row. Again, the second time three-peating, six-time national champion, that uh, NBA champion, that is an incredible comeback story, Michael Jordan. You all follow me today? How many baseball fans? Basketball's not your thing, you're baseball. Baseball fans? We have any Yankee fans in the room? All right? We have any Red Sox fans in the room? All right. Oh, try the Cubs. Any Cubs fans in the room? Hey, there we go. We got to be in the right part of the country. I wish that, the, well, the Cubs, they're a comeback story too. I should have used them. This, this story is, is, a, it is an incredible comeback story. It involves the, the Yankees and the Red Sox. In 2004, the American League Championship Series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Game three, game three, the Red Sox got clobbered by the Yankees, 19 to eight, to go up three games to nothing. The Red Sox down three games. No team in the history of baseball had ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in a seven-game series. But the next three games, Boston edged out the Yankees in three games straight. And in game seven, in New York, they beat the Yankees 10 to three to win the American League Championship. Coming back, first 
First time ever in, in, in Major League Baseball that a team had come back from being down three to nothing and no team has done it since. They went on to the World Series to sweep the St. Louis Cardinals and won their first World Series in 86 years. That's an incredible comeback story. This is token for, for some of you in the room. Thanks to Pastor Luke. Hey, to have a comeback story takes a major setback. Just saying. We got any Vikings fans in the room? Vikings? Chiefs? Packers? Bears? Oh, we got Niners? Okay, there we go. All right, we can go through the whole, the whole team list. But we're gonna talk about the, we're gonna talk about the Vikings. This happened just less than a year and a half ago in December of 2022. Uh, the Vikings were playing the Indianapolis Colts and at halftime were down 33 to nothing. 33 to nothing at halftime. With f- less than five minutes in the third quarter, the score was 36 to seven. And Minnesota did the unthinkable and came back to tie the game at the end and in overtime kicked a field goal to beat the Colts 39-36. No team has ever come back from 33 points down to win a game in the NFL except for your Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Great comeback stories. We know that uh, today we celebrate a great comeback story, but what do these stories, these truly remarkable stories coming back from Uh, being against overwhelming odds, winning when they weren't supposed to, coming from behind to claim victory. What do they, why do we love comeback stories so much? I think it's because they give us hope. It says to us, our current circumstances, our past and our present failures might not be the end of our story. There may be a comeback looming somewhere in our future and it encourages us to rise above the setbacks that come in our lives. This morning, I want to look at two qualities of those who experience comebacks, two qualities that they possess. And the first one is this, they don't give up. If you want to experience a comeback in your life, don't give up. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, don't give up. Don't give up. You see, these teams, they didn't pack up and go home when they were behind. They didn't fade into the background. They persevered. And that should be true of us. Don't give up. Persevere through the trials, through the the tribulations, through the trouble and hardship in our life. Because they're going to come. Jesus said it very clearly. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. Here on earth, you're going to have many trials and sorrows. But Jesus said, take heart because I've overcome the world. We can have hope if we will be patient and stay true to the Lord. I think the question that many people ask in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the struggles is why? Why me? Why be strong? Why continue to rejoice? Why pray when it seems like my prayers aren't doing any good? King David in the Bible is is another example of an incredible uh, comeback story. He knew the heartache of of being on top in one moment and then running for his life in the very next. He wrote this in Psalm 30, verse 5. He said, God's anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning if we don't give up. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, "The, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin fresh, new, every morning. Even in the harshest of times, God's love, his mercy, his grace bring us hope and bring us joy. In the darkest tunnel, there's always a light at the end. Listen to that. In the darkest tunnel, there's always a light at the end, and it's not an oncoming train. Many of us feel that's the story of our life, but the light at the end of the tunnel is Jesus showing us the way, showing us his faithfulness. He is the way and he's with us. The psalmist said, even though I walk through the the darkest valley, I will not fear for you are with me. You're there, you're with me, you comfort me, you strengthen me. To experience a comeback, don't give up. What we see in these comeback stories is that they never gave up. Paul said in in Galatians, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. 
The second quality of those who experienced the comeback is that they did what was needed. If you want to experience a comeback, do what is needed. Turn to the neighbor that you ignored last time and tell them, just do what is needed. Another comeback story in the Bible illustrates this best, and it's the story of the prodigal son. And if you don't know this story, the youngest of two sons goes to his father and asks for his inheritance early. And the story goes that he goes off on his own, and immediately he's, he's in a downward spiral in his life. He blows all of his money on sinful lifestyle and finds himself broke, working as a hired hand, feeding pigs. And he finds himself in this place that while he's feeding the pigs, the slop the food that the pigs eat, he found himself longing to eat what the pigs were eating. He was in that desperate of a situation. He had sunk about as low as he could go. Then something amazing happened. Luke 15, 17 says that when he finally came to his senses, he came to his senses and he realized that the gravity and the depravity of his condition, just how far he had fallen, he was scraping the bottom And I think, unfortunately, too many people stop at this recognition stage in their life and they don't follow through and do what is needed. They don't do the right thing that they know to do. One, they will either deceive themselves into thinking that someday I'll give my life to, to the Lord. Someday I'll make things right with God. Or they just give up thinking it's too late, that there's no hope in their life for a comeback. Can I tell you today that you are never too far gone? That you are never it is never too late for you to make a comeback. Maybe that's, maybe that's you today. Maybe you've experienced some incredible setbacks. Maybe you find yourself uh, feeling hopeless. But I wanna challenge your thinking about this whole scenario today. In order for a comeback to happen, just like the Minnesota Vikings coming down from 33 to nothing, or like Bethany Hamilton losing an arm, and who surfs with only one arm? setback after setback in your life. Why not think of the setback as a setup? Your setback could be a setup for something better. Your setback is a setup for a comeback. We sing a song here in our church called Waymaker. That's who God is. He's a, he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, Song says he's a light in the darkness. That's who he is. That's what he does. And the song goes on to speak the truth of Scripture that even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops working. It's a truth of Scripture. Romans 8 28 says, We know that in all things, God causes things to work together for good to those who love God. All things work together for good. That's not saying that everything is good. But God is working in all of it. He's working at things for our good and for his purposes. You can trust God. Can I tell you today that it's not too late for you for a comeback? In this story, the prodigal son didn't just recognize his condition. He did what was needed for a comeback. He picked himself up and he went home. I want to read for you the rest of this story, Luke 15, verse 20. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf that we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost but is now found. So the party began. Man, this is God in his mercy and his grace and his love. My question to you today is what do you need to do? What do you need to do? Many of you today need to give your life to Jesus. You need to put him first place in your life. In these stories of comebacks, they did what was needed. Some of you need to to quit talking about going to church and just go to church more than Easter. You need to quit talking about getting things right with God and just do it. Get your life right with God. I don't know if you've realized, but the world is changing. 
Things seem to be falling apart and a lot of things don't make sense. This is not a time uh, just to take it easy. It's time to get right with God and stay right with God. Can I just say this? Because I think this is what keeps a lot of people from moving forward. I want to just help this vision in your head. I think this is a lot of people. God is not standing with his arms folded, shaking his head in disgust, looking at you and your life and your choices and decisions. Just like the story of the prodigal son, when he saw his son far off coming toward him, it says that the father went running to his son. And here's what I can tell you. You're not too far gone. It's never too late. But when you turn to the father and you make a step toward him, he comes running. And he will take your filthy rags of sin and he'll exchange it for robes of righteousness and purity. That's what he does. That's how he works. That is his great love for you. Put Jesus first in your life. Give your life to him. It's not going to make everything perfect, but I'm going to tell you, it will change everything in your life. And now you live with hope. Now you live with joy. Now you live despite the circumstances. There is a reason to live. Jesus overcame the grave. He overcame death. He overcame sin. And because he lives, we too can live. Because he lives, he said, you too live. And the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the Bible says, lives in us. So you're saying, how can I live a life for Jesus? He puts his spirit inside of you and you can live the life the way Jesus wants you to. You just look to him, trust him, and follow him. Some of you need a comeback. And I'm not talking about just a a feel-good moment or a feel-good story. There's life change that needs to happen. You need to put your faith in Jesus. A lot of people, they, they know about God. They believe that there is a God, but they haven't put their faith in Jesus. Today, I want to ask you to give your life to Jesus. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes? If today you've not trusted Jesus, you've not put your faith in Jesus, you've not invited him into your life to make him the Lord of your life, to ask him to forgive you of your sin. The Bible says that when Christ comes in, there is a transformation that takes place. The old is gone and the new has come. And today you need a comeback in your life. You've never invited Jesus into your life, or maybe you have, but you realize that you, he is not in first place, not the first place in your life. Today, I want to ask you to respond with everybody's head bowed and their eyes closed. And that's you today. And you say today, Pastor Jeff, I'm accepting Jesus. Today, I need a comeback. I want Jesus to come into my life. I want to give him my life. I want him to be the Lord of my life. And I want the forgiveness of sin. And today, I'm making that decision. If that's you, would you just raise your hand all across the room? Thank you. Others, listen, there's a moment here where God wants to change your life. Would you join me in just praying this prayer? Jesus, thank you for saving me. I ask you to come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Thank you for taking my place on a cross. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for the hope of eternity that I have, that someday there is a heaven that awaits me that is a perfect place, and I want to go there and be with you forever. Thank you that you're with me in this journey of life. Change my heart. Change my life. Make me new. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you today in your name. The Bible says that the angels of heaven rejoice when one comes home uh, to him. And so would you just join me in celebrating those who made that decision today? If you don't have a church, this is a great place to be. We do this every Sunday. And uh, we encourage you, if you don't have a church home, this is a great family to be part of. Listen, I've talked and shared a lot of comeback stories today, and I've alluded to this, but I haven't shared with you the greatest comeback story of all time. The greatest comeback story. Listen, in November 2001, a magazine called Sports Illustrated, many many of you may have heard of this, uh, this magazine. In 2001, uh, they did an article on the top 10 comebacks in history. And that article was in response to the Arizona Diamondbacks coming from being down three to two uh, in the World Series, 2001 World Series against the Yankees. 
I'm dissing on the Yankees today. I'm sorry about that. They were one of the greatest teams of, in history. Um, but they came back from being down 3-2 to two to, win, to win the World Series, and they wrote an article on the greatest comebacks in history. And that was a broad list. Elvis Presley's on the list. Muhammad Ali, after his uh, being banned from boxing for seven years. Um, Harry Truman, his 1948 presidential victory over Dewey. Michael Jordan was on that list. But do you know who the number one on the Sports Illustrated top 10 comebacks of all time. Number one in the Sports Illustrated issue, November 12, 2001, was Jesus Christ, the greatest comeback in all of history. Listen, no matter how great all of these other comebacks were, they don't hold a candle to the greatest comeback. When Jesus rose from the dead and his victory over death, hell, and the grave, he rose and he lives today. He was crucified on a cross. He was buried. He was dead. D-E-A-D, dead, gone. Listen, it's kind of hard to expect a comeback after that. Not too many people that has happened to them. Listen, when you're dead, there's no comebacks. There's no ninth inning. There's no fourth quarter heroics. But as we read in Luke 24 at the beginning, the women went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away. They went in, but they didn't find the body of Jesus. And those two men in dazzling robes said said to them, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Jesus isn't here. He is risen. He's alive. And we have reason to celebrate today. All right. I want to ask all of our kids... Be ready. Pastor Courtney's coming. She's going to share some, some, some instructions here. This involves that black bag. But listen clearly. Listen clearly to the instructions. We're going to end with a celebration here, and our kids are going to so help fun. us do that. Oh, my goodness. If there's anything kids know how to do is celebrate. That's right. And so this is what we're going to do. I want you to open up your black bag right where you're sitting, and I want you to pull out what's inside. Be real careful. Okay. It doesn't look like much, but I tell you, it's going to be pretty fun. I want you guys. It's not a firework. It's not a firework. There won't be a big boom, but it will be exciting. So put this on your hand like that. That's important. Moms and dads of little ones, be be sure you can come up and help them, but we're going to invite them up. So early childhood kids and early elementary, they might need a little help from you parents. All right. But for all you kids. Don't do this now. Don't do it now. Well, Just go ahead. It. Go ahead. Oh, explain don't it, you but do don't, it now. Don't but do I'll what show. you're explaining. You want me to show them? Oh, it's pretty exciting. Okay. okay. So you're going to, not at this moment, but when I tell you to, when we say, he's still rolling stones away. In, this, in the part of the song where song. we talk about him rolling stones we're away. We're going to rip this sucker open, and we're just going to let her rip all together. And it's going to be so it's gonna fun. It's going to be quite the spectacular right. celebration. So I'm going to have kids you kiddos help us. come up so here. We, gotta, we, gotta, we don't, need don't space. Don't rip them off yet. Okay, don't, don't rip them off yet. yet. Hold but come on up to here. it. Hold on to it, Let's kids. spread out. Let's we're going to spread out room. all across uh-huh. the front, and we're going to face. Parents, and if we can have some people up on the steps, I think that would be helpful. So everybody spread out a little bit. Spread out across the front. Some of you can come up here on the steps so that everybody can see. All right? This is going to be phenomenal. Okay. Watch Pastor Courtney. She's going to direct this. And in the song, when we sing, when he hung up on the cross and he rose up from the grave, that's when we're going to throw the streams. Hey, some of you can step up here where where people can see. Do you want to back up on the steps? Oh, this is good. All right, here we go. All right. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Come on. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy.
said, celebrating, and that's were you saying something? I said there's joy in the house. There we go. There's joy in the house, there's joy in our lives, and we have reason to celebrate every day of our lives. That's right. But it's all because of the Jesus. resurrection. That's it's right. because of what Jesus did in overcoming death. Kids, thank you for helping us to celebrate, and thank you You're all awesome. for being here today. We are honored that you chose to be here today. We've got another service coming in here at 11, so I don't want to tell you that you can't talk to anybody, but if you can, uh, you know, be mindful that there's another group coming in. Thank you. God bless you. Happy Easter. He's risen. Happy Easter. We love you.